Danny Stewart for BassJapanDirect.com with another Naked Sound review. Um, so I'm going to be continuing this review um, on the smartphone camera and mic, um, going through an amp so you can hear what the bass sounds like naturally in a room. Um, you've heard it uh, direct there in the beginning video, which is on, uh, which was direct through Focusrite and filmed in 4K. Um, and by the way, that's an original track of mine, which will be dropping real soon on um, all digital, digital platforms under my artist name, Danny M. Stewart. So please do check it, do check it out. Much appreciated. Uh, okay, so my plug over. Um, let's talk about this bass. Um, so this beauty um, is, uh, it has a light ash body. Um, instead of a white ash body, so the the weight is quite is quite comfortable. It's around four kilograms, um, which for a five string, as you know, is light. Um, and uh, I'm currently in passive mode, just on the, the rear pickup, and I'll just noodle around while I talk. So it's got. Um, Five piece babinga and cortisol maple neck, and um, it's got the uh, <coughs> high grade Golo lightweight tuning pegs, uh, GB 528s. Um, and you got the Gotto um, SJ bridge there, uh, which has the steel saddles. Um, it's a nice bridge, um, has good properties for sustain, and uh, as you can hear, this bass, despite being quite light, has pretty nice um, sustain as it is. Um, it's got a good, strong B string, I'm sure you heard. Um, on the original track at the beginning, um, how good that B string sounds um, is quite phenomenal. Um, but yeah, um, what I like about the Dragonfly uh, is there are a couple of main points that I like. One of the main ones is is the sound set on the preamp. Um, the other thing is that the fretwork is always pristine. Um, and these things set up really nice and low, you know. So, um, you get really, really easy, um, smooth playability. Uh, and, uh, yeah, the preamp is very powerful. So if, let's just have a listen uh, between active and passive. 
Um, Um, in passive mode you're going to get um a significant drop of course uh, between active and passive mode um, in the active mode there I had the uh, only had the uh, treble at notch uh, everything else boosted and the uh, master tone halfway so So this is passive uh, with a mass tone fill up. Uh, active. You heard it um, in the uh, intro track for Slap, it just sounds great. You say um, you know me. You balanced. Do not really know me at all. It's got something, um, I was trying to put my finger on it, um, but compared to like other modern jazz basses, um, like here we've got Intelligent Z, and behind it there's a Moon, um, Larry Graham. And both of those are in white ash, and they have this kind of um, very, very glassy punch. Uh, when every, when balance and everything's dialed up, which is beautiful and it records absolutely wonderfully, um, but they're very sort of um, uh, they. It's different to the. What's different is this has like more sort of depth. It's it almost like when you record it, you can hear it. When you listen back, you can hear it coming from behind. It sort of fills out the room a bit more. It feels like, almost like it has some acoustic properties, even though it's not chambered. Um, I don't know what that comes from, but a lot of the Dragonfly actually have that. Um, um, I think it's to do with the materials. I think like if they were using a very, very dense um, very, very dense uh, and heavy grain, um, it would become more like those uh, bases over there. Um, but it could also have to do with the, the preamp voicing um, and the pickups. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but anyway, all I know is I like it. I like that, that uh, quality of, of the sound. Um, And it sort of works for a lot of different um, genres. Like you can you can play fusion, jazz, rock, pop, funk, soul, R and B, 
anything really um, in contemporary music on a dragonfly. Uh, it's very, very versatile, the sound set. And that, that's really the main thing that I wanted to get across in this part of the video. Um, I don't really think I need to go into much more, more depth about it. Um, but uh, yeah, so, so just to reiterate, um, the the main points of construction on this, um, I would say, having the five-piece neck for that, for that extra stability, um, babinga and cordesaw and maple, and having this uh, special joint. <coughs> Excuse me, it's uh, hay fever season over here, there's lots of pollen about um, already. But this is a nice, comfortable joint, um, the contour, there is, uh, I guess that the thought. I don't actually. You, I don't. I never actually put my thumb this far up. I'm one of these guys that floats his thumb down here, and then I just, I, I, I just anchor my thumb down there when I'm playing higher. It doesn't really. I don't really need um, this, but other people will will find that useful. I'm sure. Um, so that's one feature, um, you know, having the powerful, the, the, this extremely versatile and powerful preamp is, is another, I think, um, having, um, your, your basic control set for passive mode here, just your volume balancer and tone makes it very logic. It's a very logical, um, so you can say, okay, this over here, which would be like the dial plate. That's like a normal jazz bass. And when you flick it into active mode, all these down here are your EQ. And this is your mid switch. So it makes it easy to remember what con what the controls are. It's, it, it's just logically laid out. Um, for me, it's one of the best layouts um, uh, um, in the industry, uh, just because it's easy to recognize uh, which part is the preamp and which part is are the standard controls. So yeah, you've got an active and a passive bass in one with this model. And uh, you know, the other thing is just the materials. Uh, the rosewood on this is absolutely stunning. This fretboard is beautiful. Um, and I love the way it matches the pickup um, covers as well, the pickup um, casing. Um, it's, it's just really uh, high quality stuff. It's done extremely, extremely well. Um, and uh, yeah, it runs on one nine volt battery. Um, that's the battery compartment there. Um, and yeah, the, the weight of this is just ideal, I think, for a five string around four, Point uh, around four kilograms. Let me just uh, put it on the, the hanging scale. And we'll just do one of my uh, tests. This is th that's just my estimate, my guesstimate from um, from holding it. Um, so I think it's around four kilograms. So I'm going to say three point nine eight as precise. Let's see. It's actually lighter than I thought. It's 3.82 on the hanging scales. 3.82 on the hanging scales probably means like 3.9 3 on the floor scale. Um, so there you go, nice and light. And uh, yeah, let's see, does it balance well on the strap? Let's test it. Is that something that uh, concerns a lot of people? Like if it's if it's a light instrument, you know, maybe it won't balance so well. Um, when on the strap, let's just see. It's going to be a bit high up. Oh, it's way too high. So just that. That should be about right. Still a bit high, but anyway. Um, let's just get the uh, pick. 
pigguard. Pigguard's not a fix, by the way. I've just got it on loose just to protect it while I'm playing. Um, so I don't want to scratch any of the paintwork. Um, yeah, so as you can see, you can adjust it into any position you want and it will stay. It will stay there. There's no neck dive, nothing like that. So that's good. Um, and uh, what else do I need to say about it? Yeah, the finish. So this finish is called um, uh, semi-gloss. Um, so it's got a little bit more sheen than satin, for example, but it's it's a bit silky to the touch compared to um, like full gloss um, uh, or hot, um, and it's a bit more. It's got a bit more sheen than half matte, for example. So um, it's quite nice. It's a. I would say it's a. It's kind of close to satin, um, and uh, yeah. This metallic magenta mist is a, it's a really beautiful colour, that's for sure. Um, and on this one, they haven't put the uh, Dragonfly um, decal in full, it's just the Circle D. So it's kind of understated. It's nice. It's nice. It's a very tasteful sort of minimalist look. I like that. Um, This modern jazz ed, uh, jazz edge and and then the uh, the dragonfly contours, which I personally find very comfortable uh, for the way I play. So yeah, for me, um, it's a great base. I'd give it um, high marks. Uh, I, I mostly I almost always do with dragonfly. Um, certainly one of my favourite builds over here. Um, you know, um, for what I do they've got the sounds that I need um, and uh, the playability um, the looks design and everything you know so uh, yeah I'm a big fan of Dragonfly I thoroughly recommend it and this one is is, is immediately available right now um, so and right now you know with the the way things are with the dollar against the yen it's an extremely good time um, to invest in Japanese bases all right, guys, so I'll stop waffling and I'll leave you to it. I um, hope you dig. And uh, please, one more time, if you do find my videos informative or useful in any way, please do like and subscribe. And if you like my music, please do go and uh, search for my catalogue on, on all the digital platforms under my artist name, Danny M. Stewart. All right, thanks a lot. See you again.